Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and it looks like we're getting an intelligence report here in the background. That's right, we just hit 1,000 subscribers and I wanted to start off the video by saying thanks to every subscriber. I didn't really expect to grow quite like this, but uh, it's cool to see that people have a general interest in this Linux content and the software tech that's been featured on this channel. I figured it'd be a good time to give some updates about the channel as well as some statistics. First, the channel stats. The channel has come a long way in the last six months with over 8,000 hours of watch time. This is getting close to a year's worth of time, so that's quite amazing to me at least. There's over 95 videos now on the channel and the library is continuing to grow weekly. It now includes over 40 installs, six programming episodes, 13 reviews and 14 talks. There's also been over 138,000 views throughout the channel, which is incredible in itself. And thanks again to everyone who subscribed, who's contributed to the comments or who's liked my videos. Without you, there's no way that the channel would have got to where it is right now. So as far as the updates go, I do plan on keeping up with the expanding library of videos, including more programming videos, installs, reviews, talks, and engineering to come. I also am working on getting out a wiki page for the channel where there can be more in-depth articles kept up with some of the subjects that I cover and that I can update periodically. I'm also happy to announce it a Discord channel, which I'll supply a link in the description below. So if you want to talk Linux or programming, feel free to join. If you need a little help with those subjects, we have members who are willing to answer questions and try helping you out. Also, be on the lookout for a new series coming soon that explores other aspects that haven't quite been covered yet about Linux on this channel. If you're new and stopping by today, make sure you do take a moment to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos. All right, so now let's get into the subject of today's video, the GNOME Tweak Tool, or now known as Tweaks. It's an amazing tool if you have the GNOME desktop environment installed on your Linux distribution. It can help you change up the desktop environment to your liking and helps with such things as setting up fonts, icons, cursors, backgrounds, and more. So let's go ahead and launch the Ubuntu Software Center in order to go ahead and download Tweaks. What we can do is go to this magnifying glass and search for it. We just type in Tweaks, I think we'll be able to find it. And there's quite a bit here, but here is GNOME Tweaks. So I guess if you type in GNOME beforehand, it'll uh, get filtered a little better here. So let's try that. There we go. It's the only program return now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then we're gonna go to install. This is probably the easiest way to install. Go ahead, put your password in for your administrator. And then give it a few moments here to install. After things are installed, you can go ahead and hit the launch button. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna exit out of the background here so we can just look at tweaks. So in front of me here, I have tweaks open. And on the left-hand side, we can see the different subcategories we have in our tweaks program. So the first one is this general where we can enable and disable animations as well as suspend our laptop if the lid is closed. This is not a laptop, so that one really doesn't matter. It can be on or off. It's not gonna really do anything. But if I go to appearance, this one is uh, where things start getting a little more exciting. Right here, we can change the applications theme, the cursor theme, and the icons theme. So if we wanted to, we can go ahead and select something like Eura Dark. As you can see, the backgrounds get a lot darker and this actually matches my theme a lot better. So this might be something I wanna use. Um, and there's a few other options, of course, here. You got this Adwita Dark high contrast, which is very high in contrast and uh, very bright. And then you got the inverse of that contrast, which is just black with white accents. So uh, I'm probably actually gonna go with this um, Edwita Dark. And then for a cursor, I probably need something white so I can change here for the defaults. Of course, you can add in more of your own cursors and as well as applications. And I'll show you how to get some uh, at least icons and how to change up the GNOME shell here in a little bit. So you can see that my cursor changed a little bit. White glass isn't too bad. Let's see what DMZ white looks like. Eh, it looks like a standard cursor. I'm gonna go with white glass for now. It seems to match my uh, background and everything else pretty well. I like that. Even though it might be a little bit hard to see, um, it still blends in really well. And I like the drop shadow that they've added as well, if you can see that. And following that, I'm gonna look at the icons. So there's quite a few here available to us, uh, Humanities 1. Now, you might not see a huge difference in these icons um, because I don't have necessarily a lot of the standard icons down here, which are the ones that change the most. But uh, we can take a look at 
It's a good place to see icons would probably be in uh, our file manager. So let's go ahead and see how these icons are changing up while we are changing them here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, mono white. You can see that they've changed now. Dark really didn't change much for me. Humanity dark didn't either. High contrast changed them up quite a bit, as you can tell. Um, if you go to DMZ black, that looks about the same. My thought is uh, these standard ones that come default with the GNOME tweaks are pretty good, but uh, we can definitely download some better ones and give those a shot here in a little bit. We'll continue going through here. We have extensions that you can turn on and off. So here it says, uh, do you want to be able to add icons to the desktop? Well, if we turn that on, then we will be able to add uh, icons to the background. And then a few other extension options. You can also add your own extensions, and we will be doing this here in a moment. Uh, we'll continue down to fonts. So here we can change what type of font we want to use, if you like a different font than the standard. Um, there's a lot of them. And you can actually change the size of the font, which I know a lot of people like to do because uh, sometimes it's a little bit too small. Uh, when you're looking at uh, some of the folders and files, especially on the desktop. So like we could select Deja Vu here, sounds bold, and then make it uh, 14 font. And if we select that, you can see how much bigger everything gets. So for now, I'll go ahead and just uh, keep that. We can actually see everything a little better anyway. So that was the interface text. You got document text, so inside documents, monospace text, legacy window tiles, and a few other things such as hinting and the scaling factor. I'm going to go back out of fonts here. So we've got keyboard and mouse options. I'm not really going to mess with any of these, but uh, do know that you have options to tweak on in there as well. Startup applications allow you to go ahead and start applications once you log in with your user. You can add or take them away here. But you can see I have uh, various different applications that I could potentially start. Um, let's say I wanted to start up uh, the virtual box every single time I come in. This is a great way you could do it from. Of course, there's other ways, but it's a nice little graphical method. If you want to use it, you can. I don't necessarily suggest using it. We'll go back. And then the top bar allows you to display various things. You can display the weekday, what seconds it is, battery percentage, of course, if you have a laptop and you want to see that, and some other cool things as well. We'll continue down to the window tile bars. You can actually change the different types of actions, whether you have a double click, middle click, or a secondary click and what it does. Then you have tile bar buttons, which you can select whether or not you want the maximize, minimize available to you, and where it places the window, right or to the left of the screen. Then we have windows, which are just settings for the windows that are populated on the screen and what they do. Uh, we won't mess with these either for now. And then workspaces, you can select whether or not you want to use workspaces and what they kind of do as far as how they work on the display. So now that we've kind of looked through all of these subcategories, let's go ahead and add our own icon set to here to make this look a little better maybe. A great site to do that on, I'm going to go ahead and launch Google Chrome, is this gnomelook.org. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. As you can see, I have this full icons theme selected and I'm just going to go ahead and select one here. Candy icons is fine so let's go ahead and select this theme for icons. If I go down here I can select the files and download this set of icons. So give it a moment here, hit the download button and then we're going to have a tar.exe file. We'll open that up and let's go ahead and extract it somewhere. I guess here is fine as anywhere. So I'm just going to do extract here. And I have this candy icons folder now. So next I'm going to go ahead and create a directory called dot icons inside the home user directory. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a terminal. Make this a little bigger for us so we can see. And then I'm going to get rid of everything in the background here. So there's not too much going on. Minimize that. All right, we're back on the desktop. Let me minimize this as well and the tweaks tool. So I'll make this just a little bigger. And let's just focus on this right now. Since my user is called SavvyNetic, that's where I'm going to go ahead and create my directory. As you can see, if I do PWD, I'm in Home Savvy Nick. Therefore, I'm located in the home folder for my user. So I'm just going to use the move command so I can move over that folder 
that I just got done downloading after I make my directory. So right now there's no directory called dot icon, so I can make it by doing make mkdir and then put a space in, and uh, we'll just make it here. So so dot icons, and I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Now I'll change directories, so I am in my icons directory, and of course I have nothing in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and move from my downloads folder. Let's see downloads, and I think it was called let's see. It's called Candy Icons. And where do I want to move this folder? I want to move it in Icons. So here, you can always just type in the full directory path if you want as well, if that's easier on you. After I press Enter, I'm going to go ahead and check if Candy Icons exists in here. It does. Great. And after that's done, I'm going to go back into Tweaks and set the active icon set to be the one I just got finished downloading, Candy. So let's go ahead and do that. Minimize these screens and get back into tweaks here. You might have to restart tweaks, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that right away. Bring it back up, go to my appearance, and let's see if we can find candy icons. And sure enough, we can. And now you can definitely tell a difference in the bottom here. You can see all these little updated icons for terminal tweaks and uh, our Oracle Virtual Box program as well as Google Chrome. Let's see what other icons have changed now. Folders look a little bit different here. Of course, I have Como Ruby installed, so I think that's overwriting what's here in the background. I'll probably just remove these anyway. I don't necessarily need them on my desktop. But as you can see, it definitely changed the icons up. As you can see, they look pretty good, but not necessarily for my theme here that I already have going. Uh, I might uh, change these a little bit later. But let's go ahead and make another change just to kind of see how we can install an extension and then how we can get rid of this uh, little notification here. It says that the shell user theme extension is not enabled, so we can't change the shell right now if we try. And one other mention, you may be forced to restart your computer before you see changes in the uh, background of the desktop environment, so the icons back there, just so you know. If they don't change, give that a shot. So in order to uh, install this shell, extension, I'm going to go ahead and use a terminal again. It's probably the easiest way. So let's go ahead and just launch the one that we were using a moment ago. And here we go. We're back here. And all we have to do is uh, sudo apt install gnome dash shell dash extensions. And that should be able to get the extensions for us. Go ahead and put your administrative password in. Say yes and let it do its magic here pull down the package, and after that's done, you'll more than likely have to restart the GNOME shell or reboot your computer in order to get that extension to work. So I'm just going to reboot since that takes no time for me. Give me a moment here. All right, once the system's back up, we'll open up Tweaks again and let's navigate to the extensions. And now you can tell that there's a bunch of extensions available since we just got done installing our package and the one that we're most interested in is enabling the user themes so let's go ahead and select that to be on you can take a look through the list now there's a few other options that will help make your desktop experience a little better we can see that the symbol is still here let's go ahead and exit out of tweaks and open it right back up here we go go back to extensions and then go back to appearance and you can tell now that shell is available and we have a drop down available now there's nothing else besides the default so we're going to have to install our own theme again let's go back to the gnome look website if i launch my google chrome i have it here gnome shell themes is what i have selected for my category and we'll look through real quick and find a theme to use um, let's see let's just go ahead and use the transparent uh, shell theme why not it's got a pretty good score we're going to go ahead and click on this and then just like we did before files and download your theme you'll hit download and once your file is finished downloading show it in the folder let's go ahead and extract it here and now what we have to do is move this folder into a directory called themes and we'll have to go through a very similar process as we did before so let me launch a terminal make this a little bigger so we can see 
let's go ahead and make that directory since we're in the home directory. If you're not, go ahead and just do CD and this tilde, and that will take you to the home directory right away. Uh, what I'll do is make dir. I'm going to use a tilde again, so no matter where I'm at, I still create the correct folder in the correct place, and I'm going to call it .themes. So after I make that directory, I should be able to get into the directory. So I do CD dot themes. And now I'm in here. There's nothing located in here. We have to move the folder from the downloads folder into this themes folder. So let's do that. MV space. We'll use the tilde again. Downloads. And there should be a transparent shell theme folder. Let's go ahead and move that and just put a dot, which means right in here. Or you can also replace this, of course, with tilde dot themes. So now if we list what's in themes, we have a folder called transparent shell theme 3.7. And the next thing we do is launch that tweaks. Go ahead, close out so it can reload. We'll type tweaks in once more and go to appearance. And now you can see that there's a transparent shell theme 3.7. I select that and it looks like it changed a few things here in the background. Let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm gonna go out of all of this. You can see that there's a little bit more transparency on my taskbar here as well as on the top. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I do notice if I right click, there's a lot more transparency as well. Let's see if we load the file manager here, what happens. Um, it doesn't look like much change, so what I'm going to do real quick again is restart my computer and see if I get more changes. So let's go ahead and restart to make sure everything was installed properly. And after restarting my computer, I didn't notice uh, too big of a difference. So what I'm going to do is uh, just close down Como Revy real quick, so quit out of here. Now I can definitely see a difference. If I right click, you can see how transparent uh, this background is as well as up top it's very transparent now just kind of hard to see with that other live wallpaper but there's a ton of themes out there that you can play with and enjoy as well as other things that you can customize your desktop with it's definitely fun messing around with gnome tweaks i suggest if you have gnome desktop environment installed to go ahead and give it a try just to spice up your computer a little bit as you can see how many different icons have now changed and it just gives it a little bit of a more customized feel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this talk about GNOME tweaks, and thanks again for everyone who has subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.